this construct or this image. I put in parentheses underneath it, uh, in parentheses, my belief in lack, taking the form of an image of self, other, the world. Because inevitably, when you make a concept up to take the place of your true nature, your spiritual nature, this construct or this concept is lacking in some ways. For example, if you say, well, I seem to be this body, or I seem to be in this body, either way, and this body seems to get hungry and thirsty, and sometimes it's horny, and sometimes it's tired, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, you fill in the blank. Those are all states of lack, states of, of craving, needing, wanting things. And it's pretty obvious that that identity is based on lack, because it's, it's never really fulfilled. It never reaches a place where you can say, I'm an ego, and I'm proud of it, and I have no needs. <laughs> it just never gets there. <laughs> you just never get to that point. <laughs> in fact, there's one of the movies that's in our collection that I just love showing, I just can't show it enough, is a movie with Nicolas Cage called Family Man, where he's going along and he's like a, he's a financial manager, he, you know, he's a, he's a very, very, very successful businessman that deals with millions of dollars. And he's got a, an apartment and he wakes up with all the gusto, he really thinks he's got the world on a string, kind of like the old Frank Sinatra song, you know, got the string around my finger, he really thinks he's great and then he, he goes into a, a little, uh, like a mini mart store and there's a robbery taking place and he intervenes and then he's walking with this black man who's really an angel and uh, he's trying to help the angel out he just thinks the black man needs so much help and let me help you out and he's trying to offer this and the angel is going you want to help me <laughs> the angel's laughing as he's this human's trying to help the angel and he says uh he said well well what is it that you need? And Nicholas Cage says, I don't need anything. And the angel says, you don't need anything? Your life is perfect? And he says, yeah, yeah, it really is. And he's like, oh man, am I going to enjoy this. <laughs> it's, it turns into kind of a, it's a wonderful life movie, you know, where Clarence the angel is helping Jimmy Stewart out. And the rest of the movie is, it's about him discovering that he, he isn't without need. He's, he's locked from love. And he's got all these blocks that he doesn't even know about. And this angel is going to give him a glimpse at how much help he really needs, <laughs> instead of thinking his life is perfect and being in a state of denial. So, so we're going to go on here. It says, I do not like how I feel now, in terms of this upset that we're talking about up there in, uh, in B. I do not like how I feel now. So I am ready to consider the possibility that the way I am perceiving this is not the way it really is. As part of the healing process, I am willing to look beyond my perception of this upset, the meaning I have given it, and look within my mind. So there's there's that willing word again. I am willing. You have to kind of get to a point where you, you can say to yourself, I really don't like this gnawing feeling, whatever it is. Even if it's minor irritation and annoyance, you have to get to the point where you say, no, I, I'm worth more than this. I don't need to put up with this feeling that's in my gut or that I'm carrying around with me. So, that willingness now will be expressed in number three, because it's really a wish to see things differently. It's a, it's a hope that's rising up inside you that uh, there's a way out of that feeling, whatever that feeling is that you had there on B. So it says, and this is where you actually are going to write a, a short, maybe only a, a, a couple words or a small phrase to summarize what you've written on 
to the top for A, B, C, and uh, D, you will just, for actually A, B, and C, just start to summarize it here where you say, I want to learn that there is a way that I can, without guilt, see the part I play in thinking A, in feeling B, and in blaming C and or fearing C. So you're starting to bring it back and trace it back to there's a way to see without guilt the part that you play in these things. That you're not a victim. That there's actually something that you're actively engaged in that that is bringing these emotions about these perceptions. So with three, you're just kind of getting a, uh, it's kind of summarizing A, B, and C, and, and kind of repeating it. It's repeating it in some way, but it's like, it could be something as simple as, you know, I want to learn that there is a way that I can, without guilt, see the part I play in thinking, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do when this retreat is over, and I'm feeling a little uh, nervous about that, or a little worried, and I'm fearing that when I go back outside to the real world, uh, I'm going to have to put up with uh, the same stuff that I always <laughs> have to put up with. Something, it's just kind of a summation, but it is repeating it, but it's just mm -hmm. bringing it together to the sense that you're starting to take a look consciously at what's going on in your awareness, in your consciousness. That, that, that you're voluntarily playing a part in everything that's going on. The perceptions, the emotions, and uh, the thoughts, and also the justifications that you're, the self-talk that you're giving yourself about, about these things. So, so in a sense you're really bringing to life just the content, the content of what's going on. Yeah, it's the content of what's going on. As opposed to kind of just thinking, well, I'm just a real person and I'm in this scenario and this and this and this are bothering me about this scenario, and uh, it's, it's always going to be that way because it's been that way, and you know, kind of staying in that loop. Mm -hmm. This is just kind of bringing it all up to the contents of consciousness and just kind of laying them bare and exposing them. Okay, four is we're getting to that word release now. I release my wanting to be right about my perception of all of this. A, B, C, and D. This goes back to that willingness, you know, of, of willingness to see things, to look beyond my perception of this upset and look within my mind. So, I release my wanting to be right about my perception of all of this. I want instead to be happy. Through the ego, distorted thinking and seeing, I perceive the cause of my upset and its resolution as outside my mind. This projection seems very real. Its purpose is to distract my mind from looking inward. So we're starting to make the connection there that the upset is perceived as being related to the world, or something in the world, and the resolution is also being perceived as something as related to the world. For example, if somebody seems to have a stressful job, it's quite common to think, well, I just need to quit my job, and as soon as I am outside of that job, or I've left the job, then I'll be happy. You know, as if being in the job is the problem and getting out of the job. Or being in a relationship and getting out of the relationship will, will bring you peace. Or being in a particular scenario, like uh, I, when I was in South America, I had a friend of mine I think who, who felt like it was kind of chaotic 
down there in South America and and she really wanted to just go leave South America and move to North America. Um, so that's the way the mind works. It, it sees problems and solutions in form. I would be happy if, I'll be happier when, and it's always kind of looking for the geographical solution or shifting something around in form, and you can just notice how that's how the, the ego mind works. It's always thinking things would be better if, and then you can fill in the blank with some kind of shift in form. It starts to get back to the serenity prayer we were talking about. That's uh, let me accept the things I cannot change. Uh, in the end, you start to realize that you can't change the world. <laughs> as much as you try to change the channel, uh, move the contents around, rearrange the picture, you know, keep rearranging the picture and keep going for a different arrangement or constellation, uh, that's where this is all leading. It's going to have to be a change in your mind, a change in your perception that's going to actually work. It's not going to work. And it takes courage, you know, to change the things that you can. It takes a lot of courage to, to change your mind. Okay, number five. If the cause of my upset and its resolution were outside my mind, I would, in fact, be powerless to change my state of mind. My use of projection, seeing outside what I don't want to see within, is why I seem powerless, why C, again go back to your C, seems to be the cause of my upset. So it's because of projection that C seems to be the cause. Can you go into um, seeing outside what I don't want to see within me a little bit more? Yes. Uh, that seeing outside what I don't want to see inside is, is a, one way of describing projection in the sense that if it's almost like the, one of the ego's defense mechanisms is it just says if you're not, if you are feeling hurt or angry or, or shame or guilt or something, uh, just get rid of it and see it outside of you. In other words, it'll take the pressure off if you point the finger and you blame or you you point at something else and say that that's the cause, including the body. You know, you could even you could even point to to what seems to be your own body and say. You have let me down. Uh, you are not as good as you should be. You are not a. You are not a very good home. And good with me. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> it could be that way, or it can be pointing to something in the environment or mm, other people, you know, as well. But basically, projection. Some of you probably have heard of the the word scapegoat. And if you go back in history, back into the Bible, that it started with the Jewish tradition where they had the the chief uh, rabbi, uh, the, the chief rabbi of the tribe back in Israel, uh, was would basically gather all the tribe up together, and then they, instead of having like a burning bowl ceremony like they have in Unity, where you burn burn all your your negative thoughts and grievances in a bowl as by the beginning of a new year, what they would do is the chief priest would, or chief rabbi would get all the people together and they would all talk about, oh, it was a terrible year and we did terrible things and we, we were a bunch of sinners and all this and that. So he would take, he said, come on, and he would get all the sins and all the grievances together and he would put them on the head of a goat. Put, lay all the sins and grievances on the head of the goat and then he would chase the goat out of the town. That's where the term scapegoat comes. They would actually, they would actually try to heap all the sins of the people onto the goat, the head of the goat, and then they chase the goat out of town. Kind of, sounds kind of primitive, but believe me, the ego is trying to do the same thing when you point the finger and you try to blame the government, or you try to blame your child or your spouse or your parent, or you blame uh, teachers and gurus or ministers or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Or if you even